Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Toyota Mark II X110. The Mark II seconds suspension is good, strong and comfortable. It is a pity that the front strut and rear stabilizer are only for top-end versions with supercharged motors, with a frankly weak engine shield and subframe, combined with poor chassis geometry. These two elements fundamentally affect the overall feel of the car. Many brands have heavily redesigned suspensions for two reasons. Someone wants more sport and puts tuning kits, since there are many new and used ones. Levers, bolts, spacers and similar elements are made for markers even here, and the imported assortment defies description. Any element of the front or rear suspension is available in a tuning version, from a spring to a ball. The second reason for the rework is more commonplace. And this is the already mentioned desire to cram a cheaper used car into a car. And not to repair an old one. So do not be surprised if you suddenly see clear non-standard subframes delivered through elongated bolts and spaces with overcooking of fastness. You need to run away from such a machine. They, there they could not have been altered. At the same time, there are consumables for the suspension, and they are relatively inexpensive. The only pity is that everything turns sour, even in regions where cars generally do not rot. It's not at all a fact that the rear ball joints, they are floating silent blocks, can be replaced quickly and easily. Most likely you cannot do without a grinder, a gas burner, a sledgehammer and a pneumatic hammer. The bolts are almost always sewn, and the levers are also often cut. That is why the hub is often changed from behind instead of replacing the silent block and bearing or just the entire suspension on the subframe at the same time as the re rear gearbox. Fortunately, the kit can be found for a ridiculous 50 to 120 euros. Are you expecting something about a resource? It was most impossible to define it. There are no dealer cars, average millage 300 plus, all used spare parts are repaired in bulk. So, regular complaints about the need to replace hubs, silent blocks in the rear suspension and ball in the front may simply be the result of postponed repairs until the last successful quiet operation of the suspension even in a dead state and the use of bearings lying in a warehouse in improper conditions. The main thing is to make sure when buying that there is no collective farm and it will be inexpensive to restore it to a stock state. It sometimes flows. Sometimes not, but with the average price of the rack less than 3000 rubles and the pumps issued for change, this is not a big deal. Unless a rail for Tubo JZX110 with a pressure regulator costs some dangable money. But from Crown JZS171, they are three times cheaper and are fully compatible. Serious negativity stems mainly from two points. Over time, the rail begins to bite as the body wears out. At the same time, it does not flow or knock and used ones often flow through the oil seals immediately, since they were stirred without oil. The total resource of propeller shafts and CV joints is in any case high and the cost of replacement is low. Used from Japan are usually very inexpensive. 80 euros for an universal joint, 40 euros for a drive, quite typical prices. Of course, immediately and now will be more expensive, but not enough to sound the alarm. Yes and everything is being repaired as a whole well. The rear gearbox is strong enough, and oil leakage due to wear of the oil seals usually does not immediately lead to failure. The price of the part is again low. Many have a teapot for the winter or for drift and normal life, for summer rides. But self-blocking with Tosen and with conventional LSD blocking are also appreciated. There is also a choice of tuning. The price of these can reach up to a third of the price of a running car, so brewing tightly is the choice of a typical JDM grated brandy grower, and even in regions with snowy winters, because with the conventional differential the car has no cross-country ability, and any cell block is many times more expensive. Finding a Mark II on mechanics is unlikely to happen by chance. It is tried because the R154 manual G-Box is a rarity and due to this rarity is very expensive. The original use price is now over 1,600 euros. The kit from the 18th body is cheaper, but also not a penny. The W58 or W60 boxes are also not cheap, as are the flywheels. It is often practiced to install old get track 260 out of 265 or 
ZF320 or GS6 or T5 they DZ from BMW with a D-guest bell because even such troubles are cheaper than finding an original manual G-box on a JZ. And besides, European boxes are almost all stronger. Nominally, the manual transmission was installed only on JZX110 AEMVZ from 1JZ GTE until 2004. Such a car in itself is an indescribable rarity, usually already having little in common with the factory equipment. The typical Mark II is powered by the good old 4-speed Aizin AW0372, aka Aizin A44DL. This is truly a legendary box that holds up to everything and a little more. If the oil is changed at least once every 60 to 80,000 and the engine is not turbocharged, then the machine will withstand 500 plus mileage. Previously, except that the blocking of the gas turbine engine will end. The speed sensor will fail or the solenoid will fail. With an average price of a contract box of 50 euros, they do not want to bother, especially with repairs. Although the last few years, the number of high quality second hand has been decreasing and people are gradually starting to repair. Rare cars with 1JZ GTE and tuning ones are equipped with an even stronger automatic transmission as in A. Uh, 343E aka W3070LE. Why stronger? Because it can withstand tuned 1JZ GTE motors without any problems for several hundred thousand kilometers. And with the stock ones, the same 500 plus pass by. Prices for used variants are higher than for AW0372, but not critical. The gearbox and front gearbox are sturdy and cheap enough to not to be remembered at all, unless in the context of disabling front wheel drive for drifting. The easiest way to do this is to turn off one of the ABS sensors, although the smartest have guessed that instead you can cut off the power to the AWD unit or the signal from the ABS to it. It is more reliable and the ABS is not super flows in winter. And like other systems with talk on demand, the main problems are associated with sensor failures on the same ABS and wiring. Wiring. Under the hood, the Mark II is spacious and everything is really very reasonably located. In terms of serious ability, this is a very good car. The workmanship of any elements is excellent, and the resource of any unit is excellent by European standards. As usual, the service style I mentioned earlier fails. As soon as something breaks down, the element is not repaired, but they try to replace it entirely with the cheapest one from disassembly. The main thing is that without a run across Russia. As a result, wiring, brains, sensors and anything else can be collective form. Particular attention in the case of inline sixes must be paid to the operation of the cooling system, since long cylinder heads and blocks from overheating easily lead. Otherwise, this is Toyota, which means it is the most practical car. Not without nuances, of course. For example, all models are not very fond of cold start and are very sensitive to errors and of lambdas. Temperature sensors and MAP due to the peculiarities of control systems. Typical symptoms of the latter are increased fuel consumption and poor traction. And even in this state, the motors will go to the last, until the last driver for the power supply of the sensors in the brain burns out and the last drive from the DPDZ falls off. Since as a result of the swap on the Mark II, anything can appear. I will immediately say that we will only consider standard motors. All of variants UZ, good old just 1GFE and all JZ are out of consideration. Only 1GFE BEAMS, 1JZ FSE, 1JZ GTE and 1JZ GE W, W T I. The latter was installed on all-wheel drive bleed station wagons. Toyota's 1G engine series has existed for a very long time and it was replaced just by the JZ series. But the simplest version of the engine, naturally aspirated with conventional injection and a volume of 2.0 liters, was modernized by installing an electronic throttle, separate ignition, coils, a plastic intake manifold with variable geometry and a new catalyst. At the same time, the hydraulic lifters were removed. The abbreviation BEAMS was added to the name, which means no layers, breakthrough engine with advanced mechanism system. In general, the unit is breakthrough and with advanced mechanisms. 
In this form, the engine remained the base engine with a capacity of 160 HP for the Mark II and even the first generation Lexus IS. Basically, he is reminded of an unsuccessful air filter, bending of wells when the timing belt is broken, an oil burner, well for advancement, and a weak oil pump. As for the resource, the motor is neither rich nor meat. On the one hand, its piston group is quite strong. There are examples of engines with very high mileage. But most of the units during our operation, after hundreds of thousands, have a small oil consumption, on the order of a liter or two from replacement to replacement, which by 200 to 300,000 millage turns into jar in a liter or two per thousand. For cast iron in line 6 from Toyota, the figures are not very good. At first, the problem lies in coking oil scraper rings and leaking well seals, but over time, the compression rings become struck. The cylinder liners were out and the pistons. If you decarbonize in time with something lethal like Nimexidum or BG109, then you can postpone repairs for a fairly long time. But while they do not bother so often, the price of these motors is not high. It is easy to change to, of course, contract without run across the Russian Federation. In fact, taken from a Mark wound on a pole with a millage of 360,000 at disassembly in Podolsk. 1 GFE BEAMS has several annoying features. The valves need to be adjusted every 20,000 km, and they are regulated by pushes, which is not cheap, each cost 8 euros. The gap does not go away for everyone, but usually one or two valves have to be readjusted. Regularly, the WT I well wedges as a result either the idle ones take off or fall. Or the thrust can sharply improve at about 2000 rpm or fall. At the top, the brakes can become very tight. The new well serves about 100,000 km, but only a select few buy it. It costs as much as 60 euros. Usually they take second hand, they serve up to 30 to 50,000 but they give them almost for nothing. Recently, they learned how to clean the valves by opening the flare and replacing the O-rings. Again, flashing with ubiquitous demexit helps a little. An unsuccessful VKG system, in addition to being clogged, also tends to freeze in winter with oil being thrown out. In addition, it is implemented very old-fashioned and floods the air filter with oil, which is sometimes very unpleasant. And the filter itself is not very successful, chances are good to put it crookedly, and the motor will suck the sand, and the clogged VKG is leaks. Wet candle wells, a wet timing belt, wet wiring. It is easy to skip the leak through the oil pressure sensor, it requires regular monitoring here. The timing belt runs a stable 100,000 if you use high quality components, but the belt, almost new, without a run in Russia, for Toyota is a harsh truth of life. People stubbornly put used consumables, although it is not the 90s for a long time. The old belt breaks unpredictably, and the wells on these motor bend usually 8 to 10 pieces at a time. And the wells themselves are unsuccessful. They cannot be edited. They crack along the edge if there is carbon deposits. And if it bends at speed, then the plate may fall off and pierce the piston, and it is not far from the first of friendship. Solar coils are pretty sturdy, but don't like overheating. Oil and oil plugs. They are rarely bought new, yet 60 euros. And when choosing either used for 6 years or a new non-original, they usually prefer used. Fortunately, replaceable tips are on sale. And yes, candles are also sold second hand. Small nuance is associated with the oil pump. It is here with a timing belt drive and it is arranged well in general. While the oil burner is often ignored by filling in bad oil and lengthening the complete drain intervals, and this leads to early wear of the working group of the pump and the wedges of the pressure reducing valve, and the cheap mineral water on a cold one strongly presses through a rather weak pump oil seal directly on the timing belt. Of course, all the troubles do not immediately happen, but in general, the motor is noticeably more troublesome than all other 1G engines and even more modern ones. At the same time, it's not that it costs a penny at all, prices start at 400 euros for a unit with a good auction estimate. And one more unpleasant nuance. 
car with this engine in city mode has a steady fuel consumption of 18 plus liters, often reaching 25 plus in winter. Considering that the, the dynamics of the 160 horsepower aspirated engine on the Mark II is very moderate, even taking into account its small mass, there are many desertified. After all, a much more instantaneous and powerful JZ is the same amount or even less. Of course, part of this merit falls on a worn-out 4-speed automatic transmission with a poorly working blocking of the gas turbine engine, power system failures, unregulated valves, old filters, but a lot also depends on the engine. On the engine. The second popular most motor is the 1JZ FSE. The direct injection version of the classic Strat 6, as Toyota owners like to call it, is the D4. The motor turned out to be interesting, not least due to the fact that the solutions of the usual 1JZ FE WBTI were supplemented with a very simple direct injection system. There is even a vacuum fuel pressure regulator on the injection pump, and the pump itself was installed like a distributor on old motors, towering above the cylinder head cover in the center. Old Scuda, its construction is larger than that of BEAMS. The cast aluminium intake with variable geometry has a damper actuator, as if removed from the ZIL131. Solid aluminium bowels of candle valves, fully demountable EGR valve, electromechanical choke, finished like an ozone carburetor. Wire clips on the intake manifold. The injectors are located openly, like in all diesel engines, and are fixed in the same way. And a timing belt with a HNBR belt, an oil resistant hydrogenated nitrile butadiene rubber in a sealed casing. The exhaust manifold is steel, with two equal length branches. In general, the motor is beautiful from any side. The only pity is that the price of a leave can't Tract soldier is gradually approaching 1200 euros, and for every sensible specimens, it has long passed this line. However, the regular 1JZ GE is much more expensive, there are very few survivors. Gradually, motors begin to get out from cars that are rare even in Japan, like Toyota Progress and other oddities that slightly differ from the most popular options, Mark, Crown, etc. JZ they cannot live without contract soldiers. On the menaces of 1JZ FSE, only a harsh sound of work, sensitivity to the octane number of gasoline, caulking of the exhaust valves and intake in general every 50 to 80,000 km can be noted. Well, the resource of the piston group is somewhat less than that of the classic JZs, due to the more obvious caulking of the upper compression ring and the constant presence of solid carbon deposits in the combustion chamber. In general, if you regularly carry out decarbonization with water and treatment from soot, then only expensive and very fragile direct injection nozzles will remain all the troubles, and the need to do maintenance for the high pressure fuel pump every 100,000. A weak pump, a WVTI wedge valve, a weak vicious coupling and fittings falling out of the cylinder head are the same as in the 1JZ GE, in the W. VTI version. It's just that even great motors have their drawbacks and weaknesses. But this engine has noticeably lower fuel consumption. So far everything is fine. And even with the engine for mortar in Moscow it can go down to 13 to 14 liters and usually does not rise above 16. Let me remind you that for a Wicca 2.0 engine on the Mark II this is practically the minimum expense. And, of course, there are classic 1JZ GE and 1JZ GTE on the Mark II. The first one is without everything at all. Ah, in the fact, in the last paragraph of the FSE version description, all the problems are described. With runs up to 400 to 500, it has zero oil consumption and is afraid of little at all, except for overheating and bad oil. And the second is a turbo version of the instructable motor, powerful and with good tuning potential which most owners greatly overestimate. Even in stock, it is much more sensitive to aspirated to the quality of service and loads. But without special costs, it allows you to reach 350 to 400 HP. Further investments will already be significant, but still, this is one of the best options if you set the goal of 500+. plus. But popularity also has a downside. There are not enough live motors for a long time. 
The prices goes off scale even for the options in an average condition, and they put them with enviable regularity. Once again, indignant that the stand gave the load or the gasoline was not the same, or somehow they are trying to justify the fact that crooked hands, careless assembly, and crooked firmware can kill even a very successful engine if you tune it to a power of about 500 forces. But I think if you are looking for a brand with this motor, then you hope that everything will be fine with you, and you are aware of the prices. On this, information about the problems of Toyota Mark II X110 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments. comments.